Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm back at Jimmy Grange Ford and we're going to take a look at this 2021 carbonized gray Mustang GT 5.0. And here are some interesting facts about the Mustang. It was originally introduced to the public on April 17th of 1964, 16 days after the Plymouth Barracuda was introduced. Interesting coincidence, right? And it was estimated that in its first year, the Mustang was going to sell 100,000 units, which at the time would have been the most in one year since the 1927 Model A but it did 400,000 units and within two years sold 1 million models. And here's an interesting little personal story about the Ford Mustang, something I'll never forget. When I was a kid, my dad used to paint cars. It was just kind of an on the side thing, but he was really good at it. He did it on the weekends, did it after work at night. And there was a mansion around the corner from where I grew up. If I can get some pictures, I'll show you some of this stuff. Hopefully I can, or you can just use your imagination. But the owner of that mansion, there's a reason why I brought the mansion up. The owner of that mansion owned a Mustang. I couldn't tell you what year it was. Somewhere between, I'd say 65 and 67, maybe 68, I don't remember. That car was red when he brought it over, but here is the thing. We had a workshop in the backyard and to get to the backyard where that shop was located you had a rather narrow area to navigate down the side of the house between a wooden fence and the side of the house probably about seven maybe eight feet tops at its widest point but when you started down that little treacherous trek it was a little more narrow than that and so here's what happened. You had the fence on one side, the house on the other, and then it kind of opened up a little bit. But before that opening was fully available to drive in, that wider opening, there were three trash cans. Those aluminum style trash cans that a lot of you probably remember from many years ago. Well, the owner of that Mustang, that red Mustang said, I don't want you driving this thing down the side of this house. It's too narrow. You're gonna damage the body. When all was said and done, those trash cans, all three of them, had a nice red mark on them. It wasn't very concise. It wasn't really a stripe. It was pretty big, actually, just kind of a smear more than anything else. And needless to say, my dad painted that car a dark blue. I seriously doubt I can find pictures of that, but if I can, I will definitely put them in the video. But needless to say, when the owner of that Mustang came to pick it up, whenever it was a week or two later, whatever the time frame was, he was not the one to drive it back down the side of the house. Obviously, we're not going to be doing anything like that today with this 21 model, but let's take a look at what's changed since 1965. In the year 1965, when the Mustang originally hit the road or hit dealership lots, before it hit the road, we'll say, every vehicle was pretty much, well, designed with the aerodynamics of a brick. Something we really don't have anymore. You obviously have nice, sleek lines, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Something you definitely didn't see back in the 1960s. LED headlights with signature daytime running light. Quite a nice looking front end. And you know, for those of you who maybe when you think about, say, a C8 Corvette, you think, I really don't like the mid-engine cars. I'm more of a purist, I guess you could say. I like the front-engine vehicles. Well, obviously, this is a great choice, and it's a real Mustang, because I know a lot of you have been leaving comments on other videos saying, why are they calling the Mach-E a Mustang? Now, I haven't had a chance to review one yet, but hopefully soon we'll see how that goes. But obviously, good old American V8 gas burning horsepower right here and a really nice overall front end look. You've got the sleekness of the hood, those built in hood vents right there and just a lot of aerodynamic fascia here. You've got the splitter here on the front end that obviously gives it a nice racy looking stance. Everything really designed not only to look racy, but you've got, well, not everything is functional, but a lot of it is. Obviously, I'm kind of surprised that Ford has yet to make these vents functional right here. And being that we are in the current generation of the Mustang that started or debuted in 2015, six years ago as of the time I'm making this video, I'm kind of surprised that hasn't changed. We'll see what maybe happens in the future. I don't know 
what the future might hold in that respect. But either way, here is the front end. Here is the nice grill. You've got the upper and the lower grill. Of course, one thing that has not changed since 1965, still got that Mustang logo in the same place, basically the same design. Everything looks identical. Where that is concerned, you do have the black finish here on the insert around the grill and again just an overall racy look that not only fits on the front end going over the hood but working its way onto the fenders and over the side of the vehicle itself something like i said not a lot of thought went into aerodynamics and a racy look back in the 1960s or really for many years after that you may be watching this video and thinking to yourself, well, I don't know for sure that the GT is what I want. So I'll list the trim levels of the 21 model of the Mustang on the screen and their base prices, just so you get an idea of what's there. Obviously there are different engine combinations available besides this five liter V8. And safety features, something that in 1965 was pretty much just a lap belt. He really didn't have a lot of safety built into those Mustangs back then or any car for that matter as we do today. So I'll list a partial list of the safety features you can expect to find here on this Mustang as well. If you want to see the full list, check out the link in the description of the video after you finish watching and you can see what it has as far as all that goes. Stuff I don't cover to make the video too long from the Jimmy Grange website. You've got 19 inch black wheels here. And I have to say, over the course of time, the black wheels have grown on me. I didn't like them when they first became popular, but I really think, in my opinion, that looks a lot better being black as opposed to chrome. But everybody has their opinion. Tell me what you prefer as far as your wheels go on a Mustang like this. The 5.0 badge, of course, there, that's in chrome. I think that looks good in that respect. Heated power side view mirrors. And while we're getting into a time of year when you definitely don't need heated mirrors, at least not down here in Northwest Louisiana, it is a feature there. You've got the ability to, with the remote in your pocket to walk up and lock or unlock the vehicle just by touching the door handle. So that's a nice feature there. And just so you can see, no changes in 2021 for the remote, but there it is right there. As you can see, lock, unlock, panic button, all that good stuff, the button for opening the trunk, and of course, remote start. And something that you may have never seen in a YouTube video before. Here is what the undercarriage of this Mustang looks like. I gave you a quick little shot of how that looks in case you wanted to see it. Just a different perspective overall. But obviously the lines continue to look really good here with the overall design on the upper portion of the fender working its way onto the door right here. Obviously on the bottom as well. A very nice matching look. Then again, a racy look, got that door sill down there to give an even lower stance to this Mustang, gives it that nice racy profile that obviously Ford is after. And if you're curious about what you'll find when you open the gas door back here, all you gotta do is push on that and open it up. It does have capless fuel fill, just so you know. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about styling here, but mainly, when it comes to the rear and really overall with the Mustang GT, last summer I did a feature on a GT that belonged to a friend of mine. I'll leave that link down in the description of the video if you want to watch that one that shows a lot of the customizations and upgrades you can purchase for these GTs to personalize it and make it a little bit more of what you want it to be maybe after you buy it from the dealership. Got these sequential tail lights back here or turn signals I should say. The only way that's going to work is you have to know how to use that thing called the turn signal lever on the left hand side of the steering wheel. I'll do a quick tutorial on that if you don't know what I'm talking about when we hop into the interior, especially for you Shreveport and Bossier drivers. Either you don't know how to use it, or maybe when you bought your vehicle, you couldn't afford the option, so you had to leave it out. Well, sorry, because if you do have a Mustang GT and you don't have working tail lights or blinkers, I should say, well, I guess you're just out of luck on that. Anyway, let's talk about styling back here. It just continues to flow. And while this is just the stock wing that comes with the Mustang GT Premium Package, 
Definitely has great styling, great looks. Just finishes off the back end very well. Got that black section here on the rear of the truck with the GT logo. Quad tip exhaust here in the rear. And as far as cargo space goes, I will list that information on the screen. You can maximize your cargo space. Not that people buy Mustangs thinking about cargo space, but just so you know, because if I don't mention it, somebody will ask about it in the comments. I've listed the numbers on the screen. You maximize that by lowering the rear seats. And something you might want to know about here, as far as what you get from the dealership, no spare tire. There is a tire repair kit, so you'll probably have to pick up your own spare, which there is room for that under the floor here. But just so you know what it comes with, it is that tire repair kit that I know from a lot of the comments many of you have left on my other videos, you are definitely not a fan of. But got to let you know what's here. OK, guys, one thing that will definitely separate this Mustang out from the Mach-E. Well, let me hit the push button starter here. And you'll get a much better idea of the exhaust clip once we hop out onto the road in just a little while. Let me turn that down just a little bit. But before we do that, here is one little exhaust blip for you to kind of tide you over. We won't go too far with that while we're sitting here at the dealership. So. Let's talk about the interior. You have nice, comfortable seats here, reasonable bolstering. I think it's kind of a nice balance because it's enough to kind of keep you in place if you're driving spiritedly or even driving on the track. Go out and track your Mustang GT. But it's not so much that it makes you uncomfortable. So that's a good thing. Of course, you're going to have everything you expect here, all the typical features. Three different settings for seat memory here on the driver's side all your controls for your headlights and all that good stuff. And over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, if your Mustang is so equipped, that's the blinker. You're going to turn right or change lanes to the right. You're going to flip that into the up position. In fact, you'll have an arrow pointing to the right. It's going to flash. Same thing, point it down or push it down when you're turning to the left or changing lanes to the left. And I promise, guys, it takes no amount of energy. You don't have to be talented to use that feature. If you made it to this point in the video, you probably need a little bit of humor. And you've got the 12-inch LCD screen here for the instrument cluster. And when you start changing driving modes, you're going to notice that that's going to change. And again, that's one of those things that actually was changed out to the GT500 version in that Mustang I mentioned earlier that I reviewed last summer, my friend's Mustang. Leather wrapped steering wheel here, nice and comfortable, very responsive and very tight on the steering. This is typical sports car steering here. I talk about how some vehicles are close, but there's still a little bit of play in the steering wheel. But boy, you have to really move that steering wheel pretty good to actually make it do anything. It's not that it's like driving with no power steering. It's just it's good and tight. The handling is great. I really look forward to getting back out on the road and driving it again. Yes, I already did because I ran it through the car wash, got it cleaned up and had to dry it off. So what better way to do that than driving down the road? Steering wheel mounted controls here, of course, everything you would expect to see there and your shifter paddles. So if you want to drive in manual mode, which you can shift in other, you don't have to be in in sport mode, I should say, not manual mode, but you can use those shifter paddles if you want to, to downshift and to upshift. And now, obviously, with this exhaust note, that is a lot of fun. And just looking around at the dashboard, of course, a couple of extra gauges there in the middle between those two air conditioning vents and your infotainment screen right here, which is a simple screen, no changes there for 2021. I'm not going to go over everything there, but of course you've got Bluetooth and all that good stuff there, as you would expect. And the controls for your radio here underneath. One thing I've learned over the course of time is that people really like to have knobs for the volume and tuning the radio. So, you know, I've actually saw it was actually Honda that did this that added that to one of their vehicles that hadn't had it for the last few years it was the Honda Ridgeline or the truck or the vehicle that a lot of people like to say isn't really a truck you probably don't really know much about that if you're watching this video but it is kind of interesting to watch people love to click on their caps lock before they leave comments about the Ridgeline kind of interesting 
And underneath those controls, you've got everything for the air conditioner, heated and ventilated seats, which makes me very happy on this April day. We are April 12th, 2021. When I'm shooting this video, got the ventilated seats on, but a few months ago, we could have used the heated seats driving around when it was very cold. In fact, we got down into the single digits down here in Northwest Louisiana. Hopefully we don't do that again for a long time. And like I said, it has push button start or for the ignition to shut the engine off, turn the engine on, all that good stuff. And more controls right here. You can change your driving modes, turn on the hazard lights, just typical features that you would expect to see here. And underneath that, there's one of the USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet and just your typical shifter here, nothing changing there. But again, that's one of those things you can upgrade if you want to based on what I saw in that Mustang I did last summer. Had a very nice looking shifter on it that actually matched the color of the car. I think that, I don't remember the company it came from, but I think they had those in every single stock color that Mustang has available. Your drink holders here, you have a power parking brake if you wish to use that. And as far as the console goes, you do have another 12 volt power out outlet and another USB port in there. As far as space goes, you might get three Vehicle Visionary t-shirts in there. You'd have a better chance of fitting a whole lot more t-shirts as opposed to people in the back seat because, well, there really isn't a lot of space back there. But that's not what this car is all about. It's about performance. It's about handling. It's about let's get out on the road and take a test drive. But I don't think it really takes a lot to really let you know that this model is not hurting for horsepower or a great exhaust note. I really don't have the opportunity at the moment to just step on it, but let's talk a little bit about handling. As I said earlier, nice, tight steering, very tight steering. I mean, very, very minimal play in the steering wheel as far as just moving it back and forth before it starts to actually react. So we're gonna make our turn here, a little downshifting. I don't know that you can even hear that off my lapel mic. Probably not, but that's okay. It is what it is. So we'll let the traffic clear a little bit here. By the way, here's another little tip for you guys. You notice where I am as I'm making this turn at the median? That's where I'm supposed to be. If you can't see the oncoming traffic, you're in the wrong place. I've kind of forced that car to go where they were supposed to be too, but here we go. There is your exhaust note. The exhaust clip I basically talked about earlier as far as how awesome this Mustang GT sounds. And it probably goes without saying that obviously the acceleration is wonderful. Let's watch this person right here. Yeah, make sure you make that turn. Boy, we just got it going all over the place. I always talk about how bad the drivers are around here. We also had this van turn. I don't know if they use their blinker there when they change lanes in front of me or not, but. I'm doing under the speed limit in this area too. So as far as the overall ride quality goes, well, it's a little stiff, but that's what you expect. You're going to have a stiff ride quality if you're going to have great handling. So a little bit of a sacrifice there, but I don't think somebody who buys a Mustang like this is really going to be too concerned about that because you're going to likely understand that, well, that's just part of it. But overall, it's just such a fun car to drive. These Mustang GTs have great exhaust, enjoyable to drive, great handling. You see pretty well out of them, you know, and it's it's really nice just to cruise down the road. I really wish I could take this one home for a little while. The speed limit where I am right now is 65 miles an hour. And well, I tell you what, just not having any trouble getting up to that or staying at that amount of speed. If I dropped the hammer right now, it wouldn't take me long to get up to a higher rate of speed. There we go to 80 miles an hour, just right there. If you're looking for a car that is in under $60,000, the price tag on this one is a little over 53. The Mustang GT, the 2021 model, is definitely something you should consider, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing like dropping the hammer and just getting down the road. 
And I got to give a special shout out to several of you who have been asking me about Patreon. Yes, I do have a Patreon account. It's linked down in the description of the video. If you want to just do a one-time payment and just say, man, I just want to, want to be a blessing to you and help out, PayPal is available for that. I'll leave that link down in the description of the video also. In fact, that's in all of my videos. And another way you can help out, buying t-shirts. And I have a brand new t-shirt being designed. I hate to say that it's not going to have a Mustang on it. Maybe we'll do a generic version or something, or we'll do one with a Mustang in the future. Tell me what you'd like to see. If I can sell enough of this first version, maybe we'll have a second design made. We'll see. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Jimmy Grange Ford for loaning me this Mustang for the day and all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. I appreciate those of you great folks who support the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.